Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks again for liking, sharing, subscribing. Once again, I'm so appreciative to you guys. I'm glad that you guys are getting so much knowledge. You're learning from this. My goal is to provide you with as much information and help, again, with this five-part series that talks about the way the lender looks at these files, the way the lender looks at your loan, looks at your mortgage, and makes a decision on helping you with being able to acquire a mortgage on your property. Again, thank you again. Welcome back to this channel. Let's go ahead and get into this today. We're going to be talking about the capacity section. If you remember on the first part series, we talked about the four, five, four things, the four C's that are in relation to the way the lender looks at each and every file, which is called the mortgage request that you put in. They're called files. When they come, when those files are put in, the lender looks at it from the four C's perspective, which is the capacity. The capacity is the income, the way your income is, and if your ability to be able to repay that mortgage. The second thing they look at is the cash. If you have any questions about the cash, you can go ahead and check the previous video that talks about the asset section and how assets looked at, and that's what the cash portion is. The third thing will be the collateral, which is what we will be discussing on the next video, which will talk more about the way the collateral is looked at, the way the lender looks at the, uh, the property to determine if the property is the right collateral if it's resellable, if it's easy for them to be able to take on the risk of funding the deal. And then the last thing they look at is the credit. I mean, the credit says your previous, your past behavior predicts your future performance. So today we'll be talking on the capacity section. We'll be talking about calculating income and how income is looked upon from the mortgage perspective and how they make a decision on actually being able to determine if your income qualifies. Now, we're going to be focused mainly on discussing the types of income that there are and what those types of income would be and what income, what those types of income are recognized. Now, understand this, there might be other types of incomes out there, but for the ones that will be going through a traditional lender, these are the typical type of income the traditional lender will feel comfortable utilizing. And in some cases, there might be extenuating circumstances that they might use a different income calculation, but for the most part, these are the types of income types that most lenders see. So if your income falls in this category, it's important for you to know what the lender or how the lender is going to be looking at that income. So the first part is going to be, let's look at uh, the way that income is calculating or calculating income. First is Schedule C for self-employed or sole proprietors. So now what this is for people who will be like real estate agents, like I'm a real estate agent and I've been able to help people with buying properties and also selling properties, as well as buying properties for myself and or being able to sell some of the properties that I have owned. So as a real estate agent, I'll fall under a Schedule C self-employed sole proprietor. Also as a YouTube creator, a content creator, I would also fall under a Schedule C self-employed sole proprietor. So when you have that kind of an income, they use your Schedule C on your tax return to be able to determine what your income situation looks like. The second type of income that is being calculated will be called a self-employed IRS tax forms, which are 1120, the form 1120S, and the 1065 corporations. But now these form numbers all represent something different. For example, the 1120 represents a corporation which be considered a C-Corp. So if you own a C-Corp, you will be filing a form 1120 and that will be what form number that the underwriters or the mortgage company will be using to calculate your income. If, you've, if you do have an S corporation, you will be filing a form 1120S. And at this point, the, the underwriter and the mortgage company will be using that S corp S Corp information to determine what your income looks like. And then, of course, if you have a partnership income where you have one or two partners or multiple partners that own a business, you will be filing a 1065. And the Form 1065 is how the underwriter is able to give you credit for your income that is generated from that partnership that you have. So, again, these are multiple different ways that they're able to look at a self employed borrower. It's important for you to know there's a much in depth knowledge, in depth, deep, deeper dive that is you know, self-employment income. So if you're self-employed and you want to think, hey, how can I buy a house without all the hassle? Take a look at my course. My course helps with explaining some of the self-employed income process and how the self-employed income borrowers are reviewed by mortgage companies. The next part will be the pay stub. And this happens to be about 90% 
of the population. So this helps for most of everyone who has a job. Uh, pay stub or wage earners, these are wage people who receive wages. Either they're paid weekly, they're paid bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly. There's an inc there's a way these numbers are calculated. So if you're making a certain number of a uh, certain number every hour, every week, every two weeks, you want to know how this number works because when you do know, you can now go back and say, hey, so if I was to apply for a loan and this is what my payments are, I should be able to afford it based on my capacity. Again, because a lot of people think, hey, I'm paying 12000 or $1,200 a month for rent. I should be able to afford a house that I'm paying $1,100 a month for the mortgage. That's not how the lender is going to look at it. And that's why I've seen people say, how, how is it that I'm making so much money a month? And then the bank is saying that my debt to income is too high. So this would help with explaining this. That's why it's important to look at my course, because my course is going to give you some, in, some additional insight as to how the income is calculated and why the lender is looking at you and saying your in, debt to income is high versus you considering your debt to income being at a relatively low level. The next part, the next part we'll be talking about will be Schedule B, which would be ordinary and dividend income. This is for those individuals who are, you know, either receiving dividend income through investments that they've made, that they get, you know, dividend every month, every quarter, every every year. Have a way to get their dividends. If they are 100% just receiving dividend income, this is a great way for them to be able to have this calculated, and it's a great process for them to be able to take advantage of. So again, dividend, ordinary and dividend income is is also calculated and used to help you with getting qualified for a mortgage. Uh, there's another part called Schedule D, our capital gains. This will be people like myself is what we will be considered capital gains since we do our real estate investments. So any flip deals, any uh, properties that we sell, you will be taxed based on that capital gain and you could use that capital gain that you made to use that and have that be considered income for the year. So again, that's something that would work for people who are looking at as real estate investors. If you're a real estate investor and you're wondering how is it that I can get qualified through a traditional lender, it's important for you to know how these capital gains are, are calculated. Take a look at my course. Again, my course is currently the future course on Udemy. It's the number one rated course. It's the highest rated course in Udemy. So it gives you so much knowledge and so many people love it right now we've had over 2,000 students that have taken the course and they all love the course they all say the same thing so go ahead and see exactly what these 2,000 students are saying the next part is the schedule e rental income with schedule e rental income for those of you who are landlords who have multiple properties and that's how you make your bread and butter you make your money that way it's important for you to know how the mortgage company looks at these uh looks at landlords how they're able to give you uh the money the cash the cash back saying hey you might have said you made twelve thousand dollars even though your expenses were was 15 and you are negative we have the ability to be able to give you something back to give you credit for actually owning the real estate so again you might be thinking that you might not have the ability to qualify because of the tax returns, but look back and see what the mortgage industry does, right? How they actually look at these, these deals and how they're able to get these deals to qualify. So it's important for you to know. So when you're filing your taxes in the future, you can still be able to give yourself as much leverage right? You want to take advantage of those tax breaks, the depreciation and those kind of things. You can take advantage of those things, but in the same breath, you can also turn around and leverage it for yourself in case you would need to request for a mortgage in the future. So this is important things to know. Take advantage of it. Take a look at it. Learn as much as you can and then look at it from the perspective of a lender. Again, my goal is to help you be successful, help you acquire your first property for those of you who are looking to acquire your first property and then take advantage of this market. Because it's a, buy, a seller's market doesn't mean you can't take advantage of the way the rates are and the way things are going to help yourself start to purchase your property. Remember, when there's inflation, when there's blood on the streets, it's the best time to take advantage of what's out there. So jump on these things. The housing bubble is not going to bust. Your house is not going to be worth zero dollars tomorrow. The dollar is not going to go down. Leverage what's going on now so you can be ahead of the curve. Thanks very much again for listening. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment on my channel. Leave me your feedback. Let me know if you're learning. Let me know if this thing is even helping you, right? Because again, I want, I'm making these videos as a way to help you guys. If it's going to help you guys, I'm all for it. If it's not helping you folks, then, and if I'm being more of a burden than a help, then I want to know that. Because if I'm doing that, then it's not fair for me to keep pushing this down you guys' throat. But again, 
I have 2,000 students that have been appreciative of it, that love it, that enjoy it. So I'm hoping that you guys can be a part of these 2,000 students. And you can give me your feedback. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Once again, I appreciate you all. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell for more, not, not more content like this. Peace.